the first time I made the bowl myself, I was able to connect with the people I lost. There are the Burmese refugees uh, resettling from Thailand Burma border refugee camps. They came to resettle in the US and now they are living in Philly. Basically, they are war victims. Few of them just arrived like a few days ago. They are the ones who have the authentic stories that they can tell the world about what's going on to them. This re represent my uncles. Papa, Napa. They tied up their hands behind their back and then they shoot them to death. When we found them after one week, uh, we still see, uh, we saw the hands were still uh, tied up and uh, it wasn't untied. Uh, that's what I saw with my own eyes. The vision was to collect a million handmade bones from people all over the world that would be installed on the National Mall in D.C. as a symbolic mass grave and visible petition to these atrocities that go on with very little attention paid to them and next to no action taken. We're doing it to raise awareness about genocide and mass atrocities that have been happening in places like Sudan, South Sudan, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Burma, and Somalia. This project has an amazing way of just bringing people together. We've had bone making in all 50 states in 25 different countries. Many tens of thousands of kids have participated at first, well, we thought we were going to use clay or anything, but we're making paper mache. The more bones we have, How many? the more stronger it'll uh, be once we put them all together. And it'll be like their whole support system. I want to give you our final number, but before I do, I want to say this is the highest total we've ever had in just an hour and a half of work. ask them to make about 2,000 bones, but we asked them to do that within 30 days. And so with an hour and a half, you guys made 1,948 bones. We expect it's probably about 100,000 people who have had some sort of participation with the project. It's been amazing. So One Million Bones has been able to get, you know, faith-based groups, students, educators, activists, artists, senior centers, community centers, um, health centers, you know, service learning groups. We've had volunteers who have just really taken this project to heart and have taken it to their communities and, you know, really gotten them involved. The idea was always that other people would make them. Um, it's, you know, it's this idea of a social arts practice where that experience of creating the piece was a big part of the art itself. All you need is this one symbol, and people see themselves in it, they see other people in it, and they make a very deep connection. Sometimes it's incredibly profound. And that's where the symbol of the bone came in, with an overall message that does talk about the gravity of the issue, but reminds us really that we belong to each other. It just hit me in my gut, and it just seemed like it's just a beautiful idea of having all these bones on the National Mall the um, emotions, the intention, the kind of educational process and that entire experience is, you know, one of the most successful, what I would consider one of the most successful parts about this. You know, those bones on the mall will be holding a lot there. When we got involved into the bone themselves, making bones. It was very difficult because it reminded me of my own experience. 
when is all this going to end? When I'm loading up the kiln, it's just piles and piles of bones. I think this is actually out there somewhere. Uh, there are places where what I'm looking at is not an art installation or, or an art project, it's a reality. These are the bones that represent the people I love. The first people who will come to mind are uh, my parents. I was told that they've been killed by the Burmese troops. I still have those horrible dreams sometimes. So making this bone can represent one of my parents' bone. And that's where I take out, I pull out the pain. I guess you can say I pull out the pain and put it into this bowl. The visual aspect can kind of grab people's attention in a way that can be really powerful. It might touch people that might normally shy away or not be exposed to this type of information. I hope it's used as a, an introduction for a lot of people to further action and to a commitment to resolving these conflicts and doing, doing what you can do in your community. These are traveling bones. They're moving from city to city to city, from small schools, from churches, from people's backyards. And they're going not to just any location. They're going to, to Washington, D.C. I'm an art teacher in Oklahoma, and the past two years my students have uh, participated in this One Million Bones project. Oklahoma sent uh, just over 12,000 bones total, and uh, you know several different universities and schools participated. I've been driving over 20 hours, so I'm going to be pulling some bones out of my car that I brought with me. Florida has about 21,000 bones. Chicago, Illinois has about 30,000 bones. New Orleans has about 80,000 bones. We found our bones from Oklahoma. 20,000 in Colorado, 20,000 in Las Vegas. My classroom was the only elementary school that participated in the whole state. It was very impactful for the older grades, fourth and fifth grade. I think it really enacts change in them first. And with my students, they could see the passion that I had for it. You know, and that kind of just spreads and it's contagious. This is the chance, like we're not, there is no next year. We actually have people representing like people from Michigan, people from New Mexico, people from Oklahoma, New Orleans. I mean, they've like come from around the country for this. It's not like we can say, oh, okay, you know, we'll come back next month when the weather's better or next year. This is it right now. We've been working, all these people have been working for it for, you know, three and a half years. So this is, this is the moment. And, we grab it. Thank you so much for coming today. Well, I can't tell you. Food. Okay, but I just want to say how much it means to me and that you're staying. Good. Thank you. It is raining, but I think it's, it speaks of what the victims of the atrocities are going through. You know, I don't think rain stops them from being abused or being violated in any kind of way. So I think it, it gives you even more of a determination to get this done, no matter what is put in your way. By you making these bones, by you placing these bones on the mall, 
by you going to visit a member of Congress or the United States Senator staff with a bone in your hand. It reminds them that this is real. This is not, you know, some abstraction. This is for real. crimes against humanity and war crime is still going on in Burma and that's something that I wanted to talk to people about and of course for them to be able to get the better uh, picture of what they can do to help us make a difference. Now these bones are coming alive and people are, are seeing them coming alive and they start speaking to people and they start uh, telling their own stories. This is why we bring you these bones, to bring it forward. I survived this far and I have to live and tell their stories to making sure that the people who survive don't have to go through what I, what I live through. So I guess that's my important message for you. Bones fashioned by young and old from all over the world with hands and hearts. Today we will lay one million bones on this mall. We will lay one million bones on the conscience of the world. And when we hold these bones today, we know we are all responsible one for another. Let us lay these one million bones with our hands with our hearts, but most with our hopes, our hopes, our hopes for a better world. It wouldn't be what it is without every single one of those efforts, every single bone that's been made, every single relationship that's been made. You know, when we talk about it as a social arts practice, it's about this opportunity that people have to become part of this thing that's so much larger, but which absolutely requires their participation in it. I do believe that every single bone has its own story. They all have their meaning, and uh, to put them here, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. But I'm just hopeful that change will come slowly, steadily, and uh, eventually get to the point where we, we want to see.
feel as if these bones are real. The story behind it, the struggle, the conversation, the discussion, we'll have to keep going on. This one million one project is not over. We cannot slow down, we cannot give up.